unto God. Leviticus shares with us how Jesus had given us the blueprint of a sacrifice that had to be made. Now, the person who was bringing in this animal that had to be uh, spotless and without blemish, he had to bring it to the priest. The priest, such as Aaron, would then take the animal that was killed and allow the blood to be sprinkled upon the altar. And the animal then would be placed on top of the daily offering and the meal offering on the altar which was already burning. While this was being done, or even before it was being done, the set or the good part of this uh, uh, sacrifice was given unto Aaron and unto his sons. The Bible says the breast and the shoulder was what was dedicated to the priest. I wouldn't have had a problem with that because, Brother Ricky, I like breast meat too. And it just so happens that that portion was all right with the priest. God received the fatted part, and then a portion of it went to the offerer and to the kids. All three parties, the offerer, the priest, and God would share in this meal. This was communion. This was fellowship, and all three would be satisfied or would be appeased. This would render peace that God would have with man by them obeying a law that he had put in place. Now, all of this was just a school master or a lesson that would teach us or lead us to a better way. Because in New Testament scripture, we find that Jesus is identified by John the Baptist as the lamb which was slain before the foundation of the world. In other words, he is that animal figure or that sacrifice that would give his life so that mankind to be at peace with God, or God would be at peace with mankind. He not only became the sacrifice, but he also is the high priest. The Bible says that Jesus has an office that is similar to that of Melchizedek in Old Testament scripture. He is the priest among all priests. He is the Son of God. He is the Word of God who willfully has now, because he sacrificed, gave his life, rose from the grave, now seated at the right hand of God's throne, and is now ministering peace into the world. And it's speaking on behalf of every believer. Why? Because he is the priest among all priests. I like what Revelation says. He is the king of all kings, Lord of all lords. He is our high priest. He gave his life so that we could have life and have the fullness thereof. And as I bring today's lesson to a close, it is so important that we understand that we need peace today. We need the peace of God. Listen, circumstances and situations can happen in your life, but you should not allow that to penetrate through the peace of God which rests in your heart. Look at Old Testament scriptures. The Bible says that David had fought against Goliath. Here is a boy who had the fear of God in his heart. Having the fear of God simply means 
that even though I have to stand up against a giant, I will not be afraid. Why? Because the peace of God causes me to realize that God has already given me the victory before the fight had even begun. My spiritual mother shared the testimony of a four-year-old who was in an accident, and when the car flipped over and turned around or over several times, that baby cried out, Jesus. And when uh, they got the report that the baby, the parents, and the oldest siblings were all safe, not even a scrap was on them, the four-year-old said that I prayed they called on the name of Jesus when the car was flipping over. And I knew that we would be okay because I was in the car. How can a four-year-old have that kind of faith and confidence and peace with God? It is because someone has taken time out to teach that baby the basic principles of how the peace of God works. Listen, the peace of God will cause Shadrach, Meshach, and the dead nigga to be thrown into a fiery furnace by an evil king named Nebuchadnezzar who would predict that they would be uh, killed by this horrendous death of burning in a fire that was turned up so high that the men who took them and threw them in the fire had burned up themselves. And the Bible says that when they threw the three Hebrew boys into the fiery furnace, all three fell down. Listen, in your situations, in your trials, and even in your tribulations, you may find yourself falling down, but didn't Donnie McCarthy say in his song, we fall down, but we get up? The Bible says that a righteous man falls seven times, but he gets back up. The Bible says that Nebuchadnezzar, after witnessing that some of his men who had transported the three Hebrew boys, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego into the fiery furnace, when this man had witnessed that his men had burnt up because the fire was too hot for them to withstand the flame, he began to look in the furnace, and what did he see? He said he saw the three Hebrew boys being at peace. They had to be at peace. Why? Because he saw them walking in the fire. And he said that it looked like a fourth one was in there. Now they only threw three in, but he said that it looked like a fourth person is in that fire who resembles the Son of God. Listen, my friends, you need to believe that when you're going through your terrible times, your trials and tribulations, you're never going alone. You're never going through it alone. But David said, Yea, though I walk through the valley in the shadow of death, thou art with me. Thou rod and thy staff, they shall comfort me. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of my enemy. My cup runneth over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord. Hallelujah. I want to close today out with this wonderful song by this brother, more than Seth. More than Seth is one of my favorite gospel artists. He's a young man that God is using to pastor a sheep. More than himself has no problem with admitting he is not perfect, but he wants people to know that his apologies are sincere. Seth is a 48-year-old pastor and gospel singer, took to his Facebook friends and shared a message that he refers 
to is a more than seven.